The Eagles made all their moves. They're down the 53 players. The initial 53-man roster is in. We're going to break it all down for you. This is the Eagle Eye Podcast presented by Nissan with Ruben Frank. I'm Dave Zangaro. Rube, a lot has happened since the last time we spoke with everyone. The Eagles have their 53 for now. For now. It's really a fun day. Um, we're not the guys that have to tell people they didn't make the team. So and we also didn't get cut. We didn't get cut. We still are. That there. I know of. I haven't seen. Do podcasts have roster moves? I haven't seen today's roster moves, but I think we're okay. Um, it, it is. It's a fun day. You see, seeing the roster take shape, and there's always those surprises. You know, I always get my 53 done. I'm like, I got it. I nailed it. I got all 53 right. Never do. Um, I didn't count how. I think I got three wrong. Did you count yours up yet? I haven't had a chance. Um, I'll tell you that I would have. I think the Eagles would have been better off with my 53 than the one they they chose. Yeah, we'll get to. We'll, but I say that every year. We'll too. get to. <laughs> we'll get to why. Um, some surprises, not a, a lot, but but a few, and and we'll get to those. Uh, but I think the thing to emphasize is there's going to be a lot of change over the next 24, 48 hours. Certainly, this is not the 53 that's going to fly to Brazil in, in a week and a half. So. Uh, a lot more to come. Speaking of, I fly to Brazil in a week. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? It really sneaks up on you here. Uh, the season is just around the corner. Once the, the roster is mostly crystallized, we, we start to see the season come together. Yeah, and the Eagles will practice tomorrow, which is Wednesday and Thursday, and then off Friday, Saturday, and then they start their regular practice week Sunday, which will be a Wednesday kind of. Um, and then here we go. We're going to have a game. So can't wait. Not only did the Eagles make all their roster moves, but we also talked to Howie Roseman and Nick Sirianni uh, after four o'clock. So we got their insight on everything they did. Uh, they can't tell us everything, of course, because like we mentioned, it is a little fluid at this point. But uh, I think the headline of roster cut down day is someone who did not get cut. Uh, we've been talking for months that we thought James Bradbury was not going to be here. Maybe he's going to be here. Well, I mean, he's a vested veteran, so they just guaranteed his salary. His base isn't isn't real high, but I mean, if if they didn't want him, I, I can't figure out why they would have kept him. I mean, you could you could potentially think that they're trying to buy more time to trade him. Could be, but yeah, I, I don't know. I maybe he's a backup safety. It's a it's an interest. It's been a weird. Gosh, it's been a weird six months for James Bradbury. I mean, they change his position. We think he's getting cut any day now or traded if there's any team out there willing to give up conditional anything. Um, and here he is. He didn't have a – we've talked that he didn't have a bad camp, uh, didn't have a great camp, but he didn't look out of place at safety running with the twos most of the time, ran with the ones here and there when CJ, GJ was out. Um, but they had Tristan McCall and they had Avante Maddox. It didn't seem like they needed James Bradbury. Vic Fangio seemed to really like – what he did and how he handled the move to safety. Maybe that was his one chip that, that how he gets him. He's like, who's, who's the one guy you want? JB. I wouldn't cash that in on James Bradbury backup no. safety, but yeah, maybe I, uh, it, it's still a little weird to me. I guess the whole situation is weird though, to have a guy just fall off a cliff like this to change yeah. positions. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if he offers it a ton of value as a backup safety. Now maybe in week seven, he needs to play and he plays great. And I'm looking like an idiot here. I wouldn't have kept him. I wouldn't either. Uh, he doesn't play special teams. He hasn't played a single special team snap in the two years he's been here. Now, he has been a starting cornerback, so that's not crazy weird, but he didn't do a lot of it in the summer either. Uh, yeah, it's kind of crazy. I have a quick quote here from Harry Roseman that I, I transcribed. Do you want to hear it? Yeah. This is what he said to your question about why they kept James Bradbury. James always has had really good football instincts. When you see him play safety every day here and see his ability to diagnose his football instincts, I think for all of us, that's a transition. That's a different position than playing outside corner. He's got a great skill set. It's a long season. We already know that he's had tremendous success in this league playing outside corner as well. With the goals that we have for this football team, having a veteran player like that on the roster that we all know we can rely on when called upon, we felt like that, that was important. Okay. Yeah. I I still think if anyone offered a trade, they would have taken it. Oh yeah. Yeah. I yeah, they don't need him. That's that's what's that's what's weird about about all of this. They don't need him. Um I I I don't get it. 
Uh, we'll see what happens next. Um, but, you know, he, he did not play well in that uh, second. He didn't play in the third preseason game as the Vikings. Did not play well against the Patriots. You talked to him after that game. Mm-hmm. Uh, Owned up to it. He's always done that. He did that after the Super Bowl. Oh, he's always been He'll raise his hand. And that's the thing about him. I mean, I, I, he's, a, he's a really good guy. He's accountable. He's a pro. He's a leader. All that stuff. But it's not a reason to keep him. Mm-hmm. Make him a coach if you want. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but here he is. So we'll see how that goes for him. And we'll see if maybe he gets put on a couple special teams. Although – I, I think mean, they would have done that in the summer. Maybe one of the reasons, yeah, um, you know, they went heavy. I mean, they kept 11 D-backs. Maybe he had to do that because he doesn't play teams. I, I don't know. Yeah, and, like, keeping guys like James Bradbury made this a very lopsided roster. Uh, the most lopsided I've seen. Now, obviously, we know what's going to change. They only have two tight ends right now. But, uh, yeah, they have 22 offensive players and 28 defensive players right now. Yeah, that's unheard of. Um, it's like in recent years, they've always kind of slanted – more towards defense, which makes sense. Right. Those are your your core special teamers, and those are normally. positions that you rotate more mm-hmm. than than offense. Well, let me go through. I'll go through this real super quick. Three quarterbacks, three running backs, five receivers, two tight ends, five interior linemen, four uh, tackles, and they're interchangeable. Uh, six interior D linemen, six edge rushers, and we'll go through each position. Five off ball linebackers, five safety, six corners, three specialists. Um, the numbers are weird. Yeah, a little different. Yeah. Yeah. Now, let's go through position by position. We'll start with the offense, and we'll just kind of go in order. Quarterback, uh, this is one that, you know, if you're playing at home, you probably got this right, like the rest of us did. I had Will Greer. <laughs> they kept three of those guys, uh, Jalen Hurts, Kenny Pickett, Tanner McKee. You can argue about the order of those last two, but uh, they were always going to be on the roster. The only move here was Will Greer. Uh, he was released, but I, I think he knew that was coming. I don't think it was much of a shock to him. He knew it was coming the day he signed. Wouldn't surprise me if he becomes a coach somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. You probably can't read read my scrawl, but I had I put Tanner McKee ahead of Kenny Pickett just for personal. Okay. You know, every other position. I mean, I put McKee ahead of Pickett. Yeah. Just oh okay. Just because I wanted to in, inject my personal opinion into that list. Running backs. <laughs> okay. Uh, running backs. Saquon Barkley, Kenny Gainwell, Will Shipley. Just three here. Uh, I thought there was maybe a, a, I don't know, like a 15% chance they'd keep four. If they kept four, it would have been Ty Davis Price. I thought he kind of separated at the end the most. As much as I hate to say that as a big Lou Nichols guy, I think Davis Price ended up being, if they were going to keep the fourth, he would have been it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would agree. I, I kept those three. Uh, Boston Scott became available. I wonder if there was any thought about uh, bringing him back. Um, and we'll, we'll see where what he does. But um, I, I like the group of running backs. Uh, I, I think you might see two of them on the practice squad. Who would you keep on the practice squad? Mm-hmm. So I'd the keep the guys that get rid of were Davis Price and Kendall Milton, Tyron Davis Price, Kendall Milton, and Lou Nichols. Yeah, I mean Milton's a rookie. Um, He's got some upside. Davis Price is an older guy, but uh, had a good camp. Um, so I'd probably keep those two guys. Okay. Yeah, I think there's – I mean, based on the numbers, you, you at least need one or two on your practice squad because right. he went so light. Right. Uh, and, and look, like, I think there are questions about if Saquon gets injured, can you rely on a Kenny Gainwell to be the top back? I think yes. I think you can for – you know, for for – two to four weeks, four to six weeks. I'm not sure I'd want to do it for a whole year, uh, but I think you could get by with him for a little bit. You're in agreement with me that Davis Price, if he sticks around, will be the guy that, to get bumped up first? I would I would think so, yeah. He's yeah. a veteran. He's played in the league. Yeah. Uh, receiver, they kept five. A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Jahan Dotson, Britton Covey, Johnny Wilson. Yeah, and uh, Anai Smith goes on IR with that terrible ankle injury that he didn't even mention when I talked to him for 20 minutes. Yeah, let, let's game. rewind a little bit. We haven't spoken uh, on the That's podcast right. since all that. A report surfaced on Tuesday from NFL Network that Anai Smith is getting an MRI. He reported uh, a hamstring and ankle injury to the team after the third preseason game. So the team's got to get this checked out. He gets an MRI. Zach Berman of 
Uh, PHLY reports today that, yes, Anai Smith is going to IR. And now this is the new IR rule that we talked about on a previous podcast. You can keep up to two players on IR that are eligible to return. So you designate these guys to return. They have to miss a minimum of four games, which is like a new rule because previously you'd have to, if you wanted to keep a guy on IR to, to return, you have to carry them through the initial roster. Yeah. So then tomorrow you would IR them. So mm-hmm. it made roster management a lot harder. I, I like the rule. It, it makes sense. Yeah, it's easier for the Eagles, harder for us. Yeah. Yeah. It is hard for us, but uh, it does make sense. Like if a guy's got, if a guy's not going to be out for the year, but he's not going to play for a month. You shouldn't have to carry him on the 53 through final cuts and then, you know, and then put him on. So now you're, you know, it, it's just, it, it doesn't make sense. You had to do a lot more juggling. Um, so he's on short term IR. So we'll see when he's back. Um, I, I don't think he's going to play a whole lot this year. Yeah, probably not. I, I, I see roles for the other five. The five that they kept, there are roles for yeah, this year. I, I agree. Um, Obviously, the the top four we know their their roles. Johnny Wilson. I'm curious to see how they use him. I I mean I think it's pretty clear he's the the big body blocking. It's funny. I mean Nick Sirianni says he doesn't want to give it away, but he talks about how tough Johnny Wilson is. Well, if a receiver's tough, you're going to use him to block. He's going to do a lot of the dirty work, and I think that's where they see Johnny Wilson playing. He's a hell of a blocker. He he's, really is very. Uh, good. Nick actually had a good joke during the press oh, conference yeah, asked about Johnny Wilson. He said, yeah. I, "I wish he was bigger." Yeah, he's just like six <laughs> eleven. That was it was that was good for him. How did Howie make any of his dumb jokes today? Yeah, Howie made any dumb jokes? Um, no, not really. Yeah. The other receivers they cut, by the way, um, the obvious ones we were going to go. The the two veterans they released, Paris Campbell and John Ross. I think there's a chance we see one or both of them back. Yeah, I would think we see Paris Campbell on a practice squad. I think he makes the most sense. Because I, why not? Yeah. Like you yeah. were that close to having him be your third receiver. Yeah. And he knows the offense. He's he's played in the league. Um, I think he's healthy now. Um, so if you need an outside receiver, you have him there. And those guys, like you were like, why would Paris Campbell want to be on a practice squad? They make four hundred thousand a year. They make like twenty one or twenty one five, I think, twenty one hundred. Um 21,000 per game per week, actually. Um, so why wouldn't you? I mean, those numbers keep going up. And I think the the rookies rookies and second-year guys make 12-5, I think, mm-hmm. per week. Uh, so, yeah, I think I think we'll see Paris Campbell back. Like, I don't think he had a terrible training camp. He just didn't flash. Uh, he didn't really – he didn't do anything to win a roster spot, but he didn't do anything that makes you say, we don't want him around. Yeah, I'm with you there. Now, obviously, if he was any better, they wouldn't have made the trade for Jahan Dotson. Sure. So it kind of tells you what they thought of him there. Uh, I do want to note the two of the receivers they waived um, were waived with an injury designation, which means after they clear waivers, they're going to revert to IR. So they'll still be in the building, uh, Joseph Ngata and Jacob Harris. So we'll see uh, exactly what happens with those guys. Yeah. Move on to uh, tight end. Yeah. They kept just two on the on the 53-man roster for now, Dallas Goddard and Grant Calcaterra. Kept four last year. Yeah, they kept four last year after they traded for Albert Okwebenum. Uh, this year, uh, EJ Jenkins was waived, and Albert O goes to IR just like Anaya Smith uh, with a core muscle surgery. So he, he looked bad all summer. Yeah. He has the surgery. I don't expect him to ever really help this team, but Howie likes him some Albert O. Well, he traded for him, so I guess he's going to give him every opportunity. Uh, but I'm with you. I, I can't imagine we'll see him in uniform. Yeah, I don't know. And, and look, those two spots were really valuable. I, I, we'll get the offensive line. I think that would have if, – if you were asking me how I would do it, I would have gotten an offensive lineman on IR to return and kept your six-round draft pick instead of worrying about Albert O'Quaven them. Same. Yeah. Now, we'll see what happens at tight end. Obviously, they want three tight ends. We've talked about this before. If you have two tight ends, you can't run 13 personnel. It just eliminates the whole personnel package. Even if you're not going to use that that much, uh, you don't want to rip those pages out of the playbook. So sure. uh, I think they will have a third tight end, whether it's a guy they elevate from the practice squad or our old buddy Jack Stoll was released from the Giants. He has to clear waivers, so maybe the Eagles claim him. Uh, maybe he gets claimed somewhere else, but I think he's a top option. And the Eagles are are 
toward the bottom and waiver claim priority based on last year's record or draft order to make it simpler. Um, so they would they would be in the twenties. What is it up through week six? Yeah, then it flips. It flips to current yeah. record, uh, but it, it'll be it won't be easy for them to to be awarded a, a waiver claim, but it's possible. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah. And does anyone love them, Jack Stoll, more than the Eagles? They love Jack Stoll, but not enough to keep him. Yeah. Well, I mean, he signed as a free agent. Yeah. So he took a, a better deal. Yeah. They but... also could have they also could have tendered him, and they didn't. Yeah. EJ yeah. Jenkins uh, did not make the roster. I put him on my fifty three, knowing pretty darn well that, he, that was just my personal stand. I thought he did enough to make the roster. I think he was their third best tight end in camp. Oh, no doubt. Uh, I kept two tight ends. I just kind of yeah. And and if I went with I, I think I mentioned this. If I went with my head, I would have. I went with my heart. I went with EJ Jenkins. I thought he deserved it. I I think if he clears waivers, he will be on the practice squad. They'll keep him around. Yeah, I would agree. All right, let's get to. Oh, I just realized. Yeah, go ahead. What'd you realize? Um, on the, the only guy I had wrong on offense was Dylan Dylan McMahon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, let's let's get to that now. The offensive line, uh, they kept nine. So some people had them keeping ten. Some people had them keeping nine. Not many people had them keeping Darian Kennard. I think that's one of the bigger surprises of of this entire roster. Yeah, no, I would agree with that. And he's a guy I didn't know what they thought of him. You know that one that one preseason game he played every snap was at the Ravens game. Yeah, he played right tackle because Lane obviously didn't play, and that was before they were letting uh, Denkwa and Lakin Bakalahi play. They weren't letting him on the field yet. Played eighty three snaps in that game. Um, now he was someone who, way back in the spring, I'd heard they really liked this guy. They brought him in on a futures contract. I heard they really liked him, and it was uh, I was like prepared then to put him on my fifty three. Then I watched all the camp and I didn't see anything he did that distinguished him from the other guys. Yeah, I uh, I think that's fair. I, I don't think he was like you didn't see him getting beat all the time, but you didn't see you didn't see him dominating anybody or uh, he didn't stand out in one on ones uh, mm-hmm. at all to me. Um, so yeah, I mean he's versatile. Um, that's what he gives you. He does, and I think it's worth noting that one of the guys that they cut who we think where we thought they might keep is Brett Toth. He's a vested veteran now. He does not have to, uh, he's not subject to waivers. So he's right now a free agent. They can sign in the practice squad immediately. So he's got four years of vest of of pension credit based on, they released him. Yeah. And they didn't waive him. They released him. Yeah. So it's based on how many, same with Max Sharping and Matt Hennessy. Yeah. Surprising that Matt Hennessy didn't have to get a, Injury settlement and Nick Gates, all those guys are veterans, so th- they're free agents immediately. Um, right, right. So, anybody who's got four years of pension, so Toth has played three years, but I guess he was on a roster in 22. I guess he was on IR all year, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he, so. He, he tears ACL like in, yeah, so that counts as being on a roster if you're on IR as far as the CBA goes. So, uh, that's an interesting little, uh, Little note there. It'll be ser- interesting to see which one of those guys they bring back. I think it'll be Toth. Makes sense. Yeah. They like him. They like him. He can play all five spots. Maybe not well, but he can play all five spots. Uh, <laughs> he's he's worked on his snapping. Yeah. You no, know, I mean, honestly, the, the improvement, he wasn't great at snapping this year. Last year it was a disaster. Last year was like it, we couldn't even evaluate the second teams because he was such such a bad center. Yeah. So he really has improved. I like Dylan McMahon, and I'm really surprised he's not here. I, I don't get it. And I, I also didn't get it in training camp when they kept giving Brett Toth all the second-team center snaps. I'm watching Dylan McMahon, the six-round pick from NC State, going, this kid can play. Why are we wasting these snaps on, on Brett Toth? What are you guys doing? And, yeah, it never happened. He was mostly the third-team center all year. He did get some second-team reps. but And, of course, he is subject to the waiver claim. Yeah, this could be Casey Tuhill all over again. <laughs> I mean, I think the odds are against it, but yeah, the odds are against it. But all it takes is one team that liked him in the draft. Yeah. Now that team has to keep him. They have to put him on their fifty-three. Where they have to keep him on the fifty-three for four weeks. Yeah. But there are teams in different positions than the Eagles. Certainly. Like teams that aren't contending. If they like this kid, like in the draft, if another team caught a guy like Dylan McMahon, and I'm the Eagles, I'd be like, oh. We could use a backup center like him. Yeah, maybe they think that his body type makes him 
like certain teams only possible possible i don't know they I, must be thinking it. how he even said like you know we're hoping some of these guys you know you never know but we're hoping some of these guys clear waivers yeah they thought that about casey two hill years ago i love that this is 2024 and i'm still talking about casey two well like chris and ellis mm-hmm. you know like, yeah what are you doing hey and and i think and if they didn't use the ir and it might be for nothing right maybe he, he clears waivers on the practice squad and everyone's happy about it but you used an ir spot on albert o you know like you, trevor keegan's been banged up you found an injury for anaya smith yeah like you can find ways to keep your draft picks right instead of waving them so i yeah i just i think that's a misstep yeah and he's the only draft pick who's not still here obviously mm-hmm. like, uh, the only one from the last two years right um and then yeah the only one from the last couple of years they've they've got like all but four now draft picks from the last four drafts mcpherson dylan mcmahon chiron and um and uh uh um teron jackson he was 21, right? Uh, maybe. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So they've kept most of their draft picks, which you want to do. Um, and how we talked a little bit about when you have so many high-priced guys, you need to really develop that lower part of the the roster, the guys that are on rookie deals. And, and they have a lot of those guys. They only have six players over 27, uh, or actually five position players over 27. So hmm. they're they're a pretty young team. Yeah, that's that's a good thing. Yeah, I, I agree. Think. I mean, they were just they were too old last yeah. year. Uh, obviously, we'll go through the offensive line: Jordan Mailata, Landon Dickerson, Cam Jurgens, Mackay Becton, Lane Johnson. Those are your starters. Your backups: Tyler Steen, Fred Johnson, Trevor Keegan, Darian Kennard. Still pretty good O line, but yeah, yeah. I think like we're talking about Kennard versus Toth versus McMahon. The starters are good. Yeah, we'll see about Becton and how he performs at guard, but. You still feel pretty good about that line. Yeah, you do. All right, let's take a break, and we'll talk defense uh, as soon as we get back on the other side. You're invited to the Birds Take Brazil pregame party. Meet NBC Sports Philadelphia experts for a live Q&A all about your Eagles. Celebrate with special guests and giveaways. We'll see you at the Birds Take Brazil pregame party, September 6th, presented by Toyota, the official automotive partner of the NFL. I think I'll be at that. Oh, good. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Uh, I'll be in Sao Paulo, of course, but uh, you'll be there. Yeah, no, I think you're going to be there, and then you're <laughs> heading down. Yeah, quick trip. Uh, let's get into the defense. Uh, defensive tackle, they kept six here: Jalen Carter, Jordan Davis, Milton Williams, Mauro Ojimo, Marlon Tui Pelotu, Thomas Booker. The top three were stone cold locks. I felt like the top five were basically locks. The sixth one is a nice little treat here. Thomas Booker makes the team. Yeah, and you know. I, gosh, I don't think I put him on my roster. Um, I kept Mustafer just because I thought – no, I took him off at the last minute. That's right. I did take him off. I kept five. Uh, Booker's a guy who – he really did have a good camp. And um, I, I didn't think he did enough, but apparently he did. Uh, it, good story. Um, and I'm not sure how much he'll play, but – you like these stories. Yeah, he's got to be one of the last guys on the roster, so he's in that danger zone. Yeah. As we talk about, you know, if they are they have to get another tight end or, you know. Is, Highway to the danger zone. Yeah, so he's one of those guys who – that's <laughs> always the most brutal part of this is, like, a guy's going to make the roster today only to get cut tomorrow, and that's that really is the worst part um, I of all I did keep this. Booker on my roster. My bad. I did keep six, and okay. I didn't ke- keep Mustafer. I changed that at the last minute. Okay. Okay. You mean like the last minute, like 4 p.m. today? No, no. In my um, my 10 obs, I, I put uh, – I can't see that. People can't see what you're holding up. No. You do that a lot. I know. I'm just trying to like – yeah. We need like a a camera that – you know how like you're in your sink, your your sprayer comes out, and, mm-hmm. you know, you can – you need They like, make cameras like that. Like yeah. the for for words, like college professors can like we need like a, pens. We need that. We don't need that. We need. I need it so I can show people that I. That's what we need. More more technology <laughs> for you over there. 
<laughs> Excuse me. That's what we want to do. But anyway, um, yeah, Booker's uh, last, probably the last guy on the roster, but fun story. And who knows if we'll be here tomorrow. Yep. I mean, no prototypical backup big body nose tackle. Does that give you any worry? No, nope, no Mustafer on the team. You have, obviously, Jordan Davis. He's going to play a lot, but can all into a pillow to be the, the backup nose? It's a concern. Yeah, I think it's a little bit of a concern. Especially because Jordan Davis isn't known to play a ton of snaps. They might want him to. Can he handle it? I don't know. I don't know either. Probably a good sign that there's six. We know that Vic Fangio kept his rotation relatively short in Miami, and I, I think that's something that's like kind of on my radar is he wants these guys to play a lot. Organization, organization, organizationally, they they like to rotate. They like to have a bunch of guys in there. Right. Uh, keep throwing fastballs at them. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting to keep an eye on. Uh, edge rusher, they kept six. Josh Sweat, Bryce Huff, Brandon Graham, Nolan Smith, Jalex Hunt, Patrick Johnson. Uh, top five were locks, and I think we both agreed that Patrick Johnson just he, – he earned his roster spot this summer again. Yeah, I, I kept those those six as well on my on my projected roster. I'm glad Patrick Johnson made it, and he's a guy that like every year it's like he's on the bubble like every year. And he was what was he a seven? He was a seventh round pick. seventh round pick there. Out so, of Tulane. Yeah, so good for him, and he's a he's a very good special teamer, and he he's got a little juice as a pass rusher. We saw that he obviously won the Ravens game. Um, shows you what he can do, and he had a really good pressure in the Patriots game. Um, I think on a third down incomplete pass. Uh, I like the player, and I I think they're a better team with him here. Yeah, not only is he going to play, he's going to. I mean, he's going to be up every single week and be a special teamer. I don't think we'll see much on defense. Right. Well, yeah. I don't think so either. But there's enough question marks in that group of edge rushers that I don't know that for sure. If he plays on defense, it's a bad sign. Yeah, it's not a good sign. Not a good sign for for Nolan Smith. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to try to get out of BG at thirty six. He still looks good. He does look good, but you know now you're talking. I mean, maybe um, Jalex Hunt's probably ahead of Patrick Johnson in that in that, on the depth chart. Sure, but um, I think Patrick Johnson can play a little bit. I'm, I, I'm, I think it's a good move to keep him. Yeah. Now uh, the other guys they cut there, uh, the two veterans, Julian O'Quara. Uh, interesting. Julian O'Quara was cut whereas Terrell Lewis was waived so a little difference in, in designation there um, which is just based on accrued service time it's not no choices to be made right uh, and Teron Jackson was also waived former another former draft pick yeah six round pick the same year as Patrick that 21 class right uh, let's move on to off ball linebacker they, they saw four guys from the 2018 draft that's pretty cool that was a grand there were only five players in that draft yeah the only one who's not here is Matt Pryor. And I heard he might be coming back. Uh, linebacker, Devin White, Zach Bond, N'Kobe Dean, Jeremiah Trotter. Those four were locks, mostly locks. Uh, ben Van Sumer in the fifth. Another guy the who fifth? earned. <laughs> like Thomas Booker, the fourth. Oh, no. The ben fifth Sumer linebacker. The fifth. Uh, yeah. He was someone who, again, like Patrick Johnson, earned a spot, special teamer. He's going to play a lot this year. Not on defense, but he's going to play a lot. Yeah, and to me, this is what I asked Howie about. Maybe they do have a third tight end on their roster. Ben Van Sumeren. We based seen on him. that one rep in training camp, he's he's probably the third best tight end they had. Um, no, uh, I, I was I was really curious about how it would go between um, Ben Van Sumeren and uh, Oren Burks. Oren Burks, thank you. Um, because Oren Burks came in, he missed almost all the camp. He came in, he was really good for a couple days and then played really well. Uh, that's what I asked Howie about after after his presser. Um, and his answer was really interesting. He was like, you know, we should do this press conference tomorrow every year, like do it the day after cuts. Why would he say that when I asked about Oren Burks? Unless yeah, Oren Burks is coming back. Maybe, maybe that didn't trigger that, but it sure seemed like it. Yeah, I don't know. So I, we might see Oren Burks. I, I was impressed by the kid. I mean, only not a kid. Kid. He <laughs> didn't have many opportunities, but uh, when he did, and he's and how he mentioned, you know, when I was talking to him after after the presser, he's like, you know, he's he's played a lot of football in his in his career. He's a veteran. He's 
got that experience. So I think we're going to see Oren Burks again. Yeah, very possible. I, I, I do think the Eagles have. But I still think it was the right thing to keep Ben Vinsumer in. I agree. I based on the body of work and like the roles are going to be asked to do. Like it's kind of, that's a special teams job. Yeah, I think you go with a younger player there. Agree. All things equal. But there's also some uncertainty at linebacker. Sure. And if if the job is is, I mean, I think Van Sumer would be a, a serviceable linebacker. But I think you have enough there. Like if this is last year, I might agree with you. I think they have more with the potential starters than they did. A year well, they only ago. kept three last year. <laughs> Right. Yeah, because Nicholas Morrow was on the practice squad, but then he ended up playing. Right. Yeah, that was crazy. Um, so yeah, so we'll see. But like, I think if if you needed a linebacker, I'd probably rather have Warren Burks than Ben Van Sumer. But I think Van Sumer will be a good a good linebacker at some point. He might be there now. Well, but, even if he's not, like I I don't think there's the necessity there that you might have had. No, I, I agree before. with that. I agree with that. Do you think the Eagles have? With their practice squad, they have a like an ideal makeup between like the veterans versus developmental players. Oh yeah, yeah. I think that's they've made that a priority to have. I mean, I think last year they had a veteran every position on the practice mm-hmm. squad. Yeah, but I wonder if there's like as you know, there's 16 spots, 17 with international exemption. Who we should mention? Uh, uh, Lake and Rakale, he's going to be on the practice squad. It's the 17th guy. For years to come. <laughs> uh, do you think they like, you know, we want six of these spots to be veterans? And Yeah, I, I do. Yeah. I think that's intentional. And I think you'll see that. No, but I mean, is it down to like the number? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, no, I'm agreeing. And Oh, I wasn't I wasn't saying one more or the other. I was just a question. Yeah, and I think there's question. value in that. And I think, I mean, there's no rules anymore. Practice squad. It used to be like the guy could only, you, you know, you couldn't have played more than two years. Yeah, it was all developmental in one point. Yeah, but now it's just like yeah. Even they'll even talk about it like this, their sixty-nine man roster. Yeah, they said seventy today because of the international. Exemption, yeah, but it's not really because you can't just bring that kid up to play. That's true too. Yeah. Well, you could, but then you would lose the exemption. Yeah, which yeah. they're not going to do. Right. And uh, <laughs> God, if he has to play, you're really in trouble. <laughs> uh, cornerback. They kept six. They could have kept more. Darius Slay. Slay. Quinion Mitchell, Isaiah Rogers, Keely Ringo, Cooper DeGene, Eli Ricks. So the the cuts here, uh, the big one for me was Josh Job, who's been kind of a, a special teams ace for them. Yeah, just can't play corner. He struggled at corner. I started to wonder this watching warm up Sarah third preseason game. Why haven't they moved this guy to safety? Josh Job. Yeah. Yeah, it's a fair question. He doesn't have corner speed, and you say he's too handsy outside. Uh, duh, moving to the safety. Move everyone necessary. else. Yeah. Everyone else. Makai Garner made that move. Maddox kind of made the move. Obviously, JB. I had Josh Job on my roster, so I kept seven corners. Yeah, and I, I think that would have been totally understandable if they did it. He's someone that they will want to keep around. Uh, and also, Zach McPherson got cut. I just like Zach McPherson. I think he's uh, a, a good dude. He worked his way back from the Achilles. Really good guy. I think he is an NFL player. I hope he gets that chance somewhere. And he's the highest of their picks that they released. He mm-hmm. was a fourth round pick in twenty one. Yeah, and honestly, like not a bad pick. He was a core special teamer for four for two years, really and then last year team. was set up to be their backup nickel, a spot that was obviously really important. It kind of led to a big downfall of that team last year. Who knows? Maybe if he plays well there, like his career is very different. Yeah, yeah. The injuries can really derail a career, and and that was a shame. Um, I don't think he, he he didn't really he didn't really shine in training camp. Um, you kind of wanted him to because he's such a good dude. Like yeah. he would just he had some good plays here and there. He did have a few, but yeah, you could tell that he just and those that I mean, it's an injury that he, some people he might need a couple of years to really get your speed back. So, so who did I get wrong on my roster? I had, I guess one O lineman and one corner. Okay, I mean we're not done yet. No, I got I got the kickers <laughs> right. <laughs> they get the kickers right. Um, yeah, I want to hear how you did. We probably tied. Okay. Um, I just want to get through the rest. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Uh, Eli Ricks, they kept at corner. Th- that was one to me that I was curious about what they do because he doesn't. He's not really going to play. I mean, he's 
He's, I think he's a developmental cornerback. I think he's primarily an outside corner, even though he played inside out of necessity last year. More than outside. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I think ideally he's an outside corner. Yeah. I like Eli Ricks. I do too. And, and I thought they were going to keep him because you, you shouldn't get rid of young, talented cornerbacks. But he's not going to play unless there's a lot of injuries. Think about it. I mean, he's also not like known for. He's played a little bit of special teams, but that's not his strength. Quinion Mitchell, Keeley Ringo, Isaiah Rogers, Eli Ricks, Cooper DeGene. I mean, that's like five. I mean, Isaiah Rogers is a little older. I think he's 26, but it's five youngish corners. Um, it's an embarrassment of riches. Um, I still think Ricks might be traded. I think. He yeah, might. he's the guy who I think might have some value. Way bit. back when we thought maybe Isaiah Rogers, but if he's going to be. On the field for you, you're not yeah. going to trade him. Yeah. Not for a, you know, a day three pick. Right, doesn't make any sense. Uh, at safety, they kept five. This is a spot where we thought maybe they keep three. So some people had them keeping three. They kept five. C.J. Gardner Johnson and Reed Blankenship are the starters. The backups: Avante Maddox, James Bradbury, and Tristan McCollum. And McCollum, I, I got to talk to him after the game Saturday afternoon. Good story. I think he really earned it. He had a good camp. Boy, he's active. He's flies tough. Around. Pardon me? He flies around, huh? He does. Um, really physical player. Um, and that's why his emergence kind of was one of the reasons I just didn't think James Bradbury had any reason to be here. Because we know Avante Maddox can back up safety, and Tristan McCollum is a pretty, pretty darn good player. So uh, it, you, you like to see those guys that earn it get those jobs. And um, – I don't want to. I don't want to keep harping on on Bradbury, but Tristan McCollum is, you know, if they kept Bradbury instead of McCollum, I would have been outraged. Yeah, <laughs> but they didn't. Yeah, I thought there was a chance of that. Though. I did too. Yeah, keeping them both is. It's a luxury. I don't think they needed to do that. It's something, uh, and Avante. I, I I don't know how you where you are on Avante. I think he's a he was a lock all the way, because of the versatility. Yeah. I just don't get why they cut him. Well, it was a different contract. Yeah, no, I understand that, but you don't want him on that contract. I, I know, I understand he's, that. It's like a different player when he's on a different deal. It, the the difference isn't that big, is it? Well, they they cut him. They let him look around. There was nothing there. He came back. No, I just I understand that, but he also that now there's some dead money there. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they didn't just keep him. I, mean, I I understand what you're saying. Yeah. It wasn't like he was making like 17 million. No. And he had to clear the books out of Avante Maddox's huge contract. <laughs> but I, I'm, uh, he's one of those guys from that 2018. And draft. also, when they did all that, they didn't know he was going to have a good summer and no, that's true too. Put himself well at safety, like and he stay did. Healthy. Yeah, yeah. That, that's fair. Um, Goddard, uh, Sweat, Mulata, and Maddox all from that 2018 draft. Maybe that's the key. How we should only have five draft picks, and then he'll really nail them. It's a heck of a draft. Yeah. Uh, and then the specialists, of course, Jake Elliott, Braden Mann, Rick Lovato. They didn't play the game there uh, with Rick Lovato like they did a few years ago. They also have a punter this year. Last year, they did not. They did not have a punter. This, they cut this Aaron Sipos year. and uh, Ty Zetner. <laughs> Ty Detmer. Um, they brought uh, they brought Sipos back the next day, and he punted the first two games, got cut, and they replaced him with Braden Mann, who's been terrific. Punts the ball really far. He does. Yeah. Anything else from this? We should also mention. Um, we talked about safety. Sydney Brown is on on the uh, on the physically unable to perform list. We we kind of knew this was going to happen. He didn't get the practice all summer. Uh, that means he will be out for at least the first four games of this year. He was really hopeful throughout the whole process that he'd be ready for week one. But once you don't come off that list in camp, it, it's pretty unlikely that you're going to come off it for week one. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's tough for him. I mean, he, he did everything he could do. Just he's not ready. I mean, it's only been, gosh, it's been about eight months. I mean, just, just over eight months. So yeah. that's really pushing it. Yeah, so we'll see. Uh, at some point, they'll get to open his practice window and get to see him on and the field. And that's the bye week, I think. So he, he would be eligible for the Browns, I think, week six. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I would, I mean, I would hope he's he's ready for that. I don't know. Uh, any any other cuts or anything else that stood out to you? Not really. No. 
I don't know kind of covered it why up. they brought Caden Cerns in. Yeah, that's kind of a the safety. Idea. I mean, they they brought him in. He he couldn't practice for the entire time he's here. It didn't look like he was close to practicing. They wave him with a non football injury. I don't know. It seems weird. And this was after he failed his physical when he got claimed off waivers By from the Panthers. But, yeah, yeah. Seems very strange. Um, well, I it's guess... like not worth burning a question in a press conference. But I'm legitimately curious, like what the heck this was. Yeah, it was weird. I can only guess he was he was more injured than like I don't know how it goes. Like if the Eagles doctors talk to the Panthers doctors, or if they get to see the test results, or or how that works. Uh, maybe they just wanted to bring him in, see what he was all about, get him in some meetings. Um, didn't cost him anything. They only have to pay him just a little weekly stipend. Um, maybe we'll see him again. But uh, he looked to me like a guy who was nowhere near ready to play football. I had 50 right. Okay. I think I got 51. Okay. But I went out with my heart and EJ Jenkins and all – I'll, I'll take that. Are you glad you did? Yeah. I'd rather lose and go down with my heart. <laughs> I'd rather win. Okay. Howie uh, called me a loser in the press conference, didn't he? Calls him like he sees him. Pretty much. Good talent evaluator there. Who was it? Ed Kratz got a question in, and I just finally, like, like we were both going for, like, a good, like, six seconds. And a uh, former colleague, Ed Kratz, our former colleague at Calkins, and I finally just, you know, there's a point where you're just throwing the towel. You're like, I'm I'm not helping anybody here, but I felt bad. I I, I jumped on you a little yes, bit. Yes, you did. But that was because it was a follow up. Right. It was a natural follow up. McLean so. was like, ooh, <laughs> <laughs> starting trouble. Yeah, he was. Um, he's like same team, but uh, <laughs> that's the roster for now. So Rube, next up, the Eagles have to finalize their practice squad. I'd assume a lot of these guys end up back here, but they might also scour the waiver wire and, and maybe try to find a tight end or. Uh, I don't know, maybe some other positions that make sense. Yeah, and several hundred players will hit the waiver wire from other teams, uh, and and we'll see what happens there. But, uh, yeah, I mean, they got to figure out backup center. I, I think they might want to bring in a young receiver for the practice squad, maybe a couple, because I got him, I got Paris Campbell on there, but, um, you know, he's doesn't quite fit that, that description. So. Yeah, and I think the two guys they released who I like the most in those roles, Joseph Ngata and Jacob Harris, are both hurt right now. Yeah. So I would I would expect like an outside kind of project wide receiver. Um well I'll go through my I'll go through my little mock practice squad. Do you mind if I do that? I'm not gonna stop. I, obviously I have I have Darian Kennard on, on there. That, that's not gonna happen, but I've got Nagata Nagata on there, which won't happen. But I've got Paris Campbell, Brett Toth, Nick Gates uh, Tyrion Davis, Price, Kendall Milton, um, Griffin Abair, I put on there. Oh, really? I thought he might be good for the practice squad because he he catches the ball, he runs good routes. He's just mm-hmm. not very good. Uh, EJ Jenkins, I got Mustafer on there. Julian Aquara, uh, who I believe would be he was released or waived. He was released. Aquara was released. Yeah. yeah, he's a free agent. Andre Sam. Yep, good one. I, I got on there. Um, Sean Stevens. And uh, Oren Burks. Did and, you have Job on there? Yeah, Job. On I had Job roster. on my roster, okay. so that might make sense. Yeah, um, he might. Yeah, you know, we'll see. He might. He could possibly get. No, I doubt it. I doubt it. He's not going to. Normally, I I think unless you're like a crazy good special teamer, normally you mean more to the special teams of the team you've been on. Yeah. Than around the league, unless yeah. you're like a Rudy Ford who was like an exceptional gunner. Yeah. Um, they should have kept him. Well. <laughs> I think they've been all right without him, but yeah, no, that's true. Uh, yeah. But I think mostly, like you, kind of mean more of the special teams units that, that know you. Yeah, uh, I should mention. So the the waivers, you have to clear waivers by noon on uh, on Wednesday, and that's when we'll start to see a lot of action. Yeah, and the guys that uh, are vested veterans, you can sign them to your practice squad immediately. Uh, we probably won't hear about those till tomorrow. Might hear some names, but that would be guys like. Uh, Brett Toth, uh, guys like um, who else on this? Oquara, Oquara, uh, Orrin Burks, obviously. And Paris Campbell, Paris Campbell. So uh, we might see some of those guys pop up. Although yeah. they're going to want to try to get a job too before they before they sign on a practice squad. Sure, I, I did kind of notice when Nick and Howie were talking that maybe they haven't gotten the chance to tell everyone 
uh, that they made the team. They cut everyone. Yeah. But it seemed like, you know, I think it was they're talking about Thomas Booker and how he's talking him up. And he said, maybe I should be telling him this. I, I guess they just didn't have time to yeah. to let everyone know. So it's just like it's past four o'clock. You haven't gotten a phone call. You're on the roster. Yeah, it's got to be so stressful for some of those guys. What would you do if you were waiting like on a cut down day? You're you're definitely a bubble player. What would you do that day? We were talking to Brett Toth. Uh, today's his birthday, or today or tomorrow. Oof. He was like, I, like I, every year I go through this thing on my birthday where I get cut. <laughs> it's like I don't know if he's ever made the opening day roster. What would I do? Um, I would get as far away from the. Now some of these guys just won't answer their phones. <laughs> you know. Oh just, yeah. Um, yeah, I would probably get as far away from football and whatever as I could and just try to keep my mind off it, not dwell on it, but that's got to be impossible. Yeah, I would think so. All right, let's take a break. We have some questions uh, coming up on the other side. You deserve a car that thrills you, a car that puts goosebumps on your goosebumps. At Nissan, we got everything from turbocharged SUVs to 100% electric vehicles that will make your heart beat faster. Experience the thrill for yourself and shop your local Nissan store at NissanUSA.com today. Celebrity cook Steve Martirano brings his Italian-American cooking back home to Philly. Enjoy Martirano's Prime at Rivers Casino and Steve's famous meatballs with Sunday gravy, prime steaks, and more. Make reservations at Martirano's Prime on Open Table. All right, Rube, we're back. We have some questions here. If you guys have questions, you know what to do. You can email them at eagle eye at nbcuni.com, QR code on the screen if you're watching on YouTube. Let's just get into them. We have a few in front of me here, uh, then we'll call it a podcast. First one from Adam from York. Greetings, Ruben Dave. Before I get to my question, I just want to let both of you guys know how much the work you do means to the Eagles football sickos like myself. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to listen to the negative media in Philly or even nationwide surrounding the birds, but not eagle eye. Your expert analysis of the offseason training camp and the game recaps provide us football junkies with all the info we seek without focusing on the negative stories for listens. Thank you both for doing what you do. Oh, I like this guy. Now for my question, he buttered us up sufficiently. Uh, with the influx of young talent at defensive back this year, would it make sense to trade Isaiah Rogers later in the season? I love what I've heard of him so far, and it sounds like he's become a really, uh, he has really become a part of the team. But considering the recent additions of Quinion Mitchell and Cooper DeGene, along with Keely Ringo showing his skills, it really seems like they are the future of this team. Wouldn't it make sense for Howie and Isaiah to let him him show off early in the season, trade him so he can be a number one on another team and get a contract, then the Eagles could get a mid-round pick or a player of need at that time in return? Yeah, I think it's a it's a fun thing to think about. And I, I, I Up until a few weeks ago, I thought they might trade him, but... I think he's just better. Like you're trying to win a Super Bowl here, and I think he's your best outside corner. I think Quinion Mitchell might be that at some point, but uh, I mean, other than Slay, you know, for that for that second spot, um, I just think that I mean, Keely Ringo. I think I think Isaiah Rogers gapped Keely a little bit, and Quinion's really really good player. Um, probably see him outside. I just don't think you can let go of a guy that talented when you're trying to win a Super Bowl. I mean, they're going to need. More than just two outside corners. Yeah, uh, not now, but this is a question about during the season. So yeah, I, I mean, if you're two and five, yeah. Well, not even that. What what if there's a scenario which I think is very much in play that uh, behind the scenes, Quinion is clearly the top outside option, which he already kind of is, I think, because they're going to play him out there in base. Yeah, uh, and then Cooper Jean comes on. Yeah, and then I mean, you have Cooper Jean, and you have a a starting three of Slay, Mitchell, and DeGene. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying, but, uh, I mean, DeGene just missed m most of training camp. He's been in the slot. Uh, you really want to rely that heavily on those on the young guys? I, I don't know. I mean, I I got utmost faith in, in Q. I think I think he's really, really good. I would just – like, what, do, what are we going to get back? Like, are, are you going to get a three for him? Probably not. If, if you're going to get a three, I would consider it. Anything short of that, I don't think it's worth it. Would you do a conditional five or four? I'd want a three. I'd want I'd want a three or a four that has a really good chance of being a three. Okay. Because otherwise, I just don't think it's worth it. I mean, like, how many times? I mean, you just go through a lot of corners. Corners get hurt. 
stuff happens. It's it's interesting thought though. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the next question here from Zach. Maybe other teams regularly have players who fit this description, but it seems to me that the Eagles always have practice squad heroes, which I describe as those players who spend most of their time on practice squads or out of the league, but have short stints of joining the active roster and playing a major role. Greg Ward is the perfect example of this. Um, given moments such as his game-winning touchdown against Washington, Reed Blankenship would probably be, probably be the latest example, though he's had more staying power than what I typically think of these players. He was never on the practice squad. Reed? Yeah, he wasn't. He was never on the practice yeah. squad. Um, who are your favorite or the most memorable fringe players like this that have stepped into game day roles for short periods and excelled? Are there examples of this from the past that are worth discussing, discussing such as the Andy years or earlier? Love the pod. It gives me a taste of home while I live in Ohio for now. Ohio. I'm an Ohio guy, so, you know, uh, I'm right there with you. Uh, you know who's a guy that I, I always rooted for, a receiver who was on the practice squad? I don't think he ever played for the Eagles in a regular season game, uh, but he was one of Sam Bradford's favorite uh, receivers, Was um, and I can't think of his name, Brandon. Um, he was on Eagles practice squad, and the Rams signed him. Um, man, my memory is so bad. Eagles, Rams. Uh, he was on Eagles practice squad. So one day at practice – he made um, he made two of the greatest catches I've ever seen in my life uh, on the same day in practice. The only guy who came to my mind, Eagles Rams, Brandon was Brandon Washington. <laughs> no, no, he was, a, he was a lineman. Oh, see, this is gonna drive me crazy. Um, I mean, Travis Fogum. How about that? Yeah, he's a good one. I mean, Alex Singleton, Brandon Gibson. Brandon Gibson, okay, yeah, and he caught some. You know, he had a couple, like seven hundred, I think seven, six, seven hundred yard seasons uh, for the Rams. I don't think he ever played, but you could tell uh, he was under. Oh, he's a six round pick, so he's a six round pick. So he's on the Eagles practice squad at 09. and and he uh, he played in one game as an Eagle. Let's see his snap count. He played in one game. Oh, they don't go back that far to 09. They even probably played one snap on, on special teams. But he he made these two incredible one-handed catches in traffic. And then like a couple of days later, the Rams signed him. And he had a nice career. Spent, what, six years there. Caught 233 passes. So that's mine. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, there's some other ones. Uh, you mentioned Fulgham. Pretty good one. Yeah. Paul Turner had that Paul game in Turner. Cincinnati. Yeah, the, Paul, the, the Zach Ertz game. Yeah. Also the Paul Turner game. Yeah. Boston Scott. Technically a, a practice squad player. I think Boston Scott when he when they saw when he came here from the Saints. Yeah, that first year. Yeah, I think he was on the practice squad. Mm -hmm. I did an all time practice squad team once. Okay. Uh you know, we've gone long enough. I'm not gonna call that up, but uh, okay. it's a good question. Yeah, it is. Um Trayvon Hester. Yeah. Remember him? Yeah. Double doink tip. He's the guy that got his hand on the on the field goal. Yeah. Which we didn't know until we got downstairs. Yeah, that was a double doink game. It was really fun. That was uh, I remember Chris Long was the first person to tell me. Chris was like Chris found out that, you know, Trayvon sheepishly said, I got it. Uh, and no one else knew. And the veterans were very cool about making sure he got his shine for that. Yeah, they were. I just remember sitting in that press box, um, and the Eagles were down 15, 13 in the final minutes. And I got my 10 observations done about how, you know, how hard it is to, you know, the year after a Super Bowl win and just, you know, it just wasn't going to happen. They had a good year, but they, next thing I know, I'm rewriting the entire thing. <laughs> uh, that, that was an awful game, too. It was a terrible game, 16 15. Uh, next question here from Mark. Dave Rube, longtime listener and appreciate all the work you do. My favorite Eagles broadcast by far podcast, I guess. Two questions below. Keep up the great work. You have to correct the guy. Heard you mention it's a broadcast on a you corrected the last guy. Uh, heard you mention on a previous podcast, Reed Blankenship may not be the starter by week 10. What's the train of thought here? Has he had a bad camp or will DeGene take over slash Sidney Brown be thrust into a starter role once he returns? Yeah, I, I we said that pretty early in camp, right? Uh, did he say what? I think I think Reed's actually had a pretty good camp, solid camp. I think he was he's been fine. Um, 
So I, you know, if he keeps playing the way he played, I mean, he had a bad finish to last year, but everyone did. Mm-hmm. I kind of put him in that category of just it was just collapsing all over, and it was just an impossible atmosphere to excel in. Uh, I think he'll be fine. I do too. I think it's probably more about Sydney being a third round pick. Sure. Probably a little more interchangeable than Reed. Mm-hmm. Right. You can kind of play him in different spots and yeah. you start to think about all these different interchangeable pieces. Sydney would be another one of them. Yeah. Probably a higher ceiling than Reed. Yeah. And a lower floor. And a lower floor. I agree with that. Yeah. But yeah, I think those are probably the reasons that we brought up. Yeah. And I think Reed as an undrafted guy is always going to be in that position where, I mean, it's like, is it his job? Is somebody going to come out and beat him, beat him out? I mean, it's hard to really establish yourself uh, in that role. Uh, another question from Mark. What's the relationship like between all the Eagles beat writers? You're all technically competitors, but are around each other so often and obviously have a common interest. Does it feel more like a sibling rivalry or strictly business? Well, Dave hates Bo Wolf. <laughs> what? That's not true. No, that's not true. No, I think we all we all get along. Yeah. For has it always been like that? It wasn't last year. What was last year? No, I'm not going to. Um, I think it's a pretty good group this year. Yeah. Okay. I think it's a pretty good group. Um, yeah, I think I get along with most people. Yeah, I go. I think I get along with everybody on the beat now. Uh, this year. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know where you're getting at there. Uh, I'll slack you. No, um, I think, you know, back in the day when I was traveling and like when I started, um, yeah, you know, we were, it was, we were all pretty tight knit. Um, well, I think it's always been that way. Yeah I, I, yeah. I get along with everyone. Like if you don't get along with these people, your, your life would be a nightmare. Like you see them so much. Yeah. Yeah, but sometimes you can't control that. I mean, but well, they're all good guys. Yeah, I think we all we all get along. Okay, uh, I'll explain later. Okay, yeah, I need it. Uh, next question from Nick. Hey, David Rube, long time listener, first time writing in. I tend to find myself rewatching the Super Bowl loss more often than I should. Uh, we might need to talk about that. He stopped doing that. Uh, and what really gets me the most is that Kadarius Tony punt return. Yeah. And the more I think about it, the more I'm struck with this question. Do you think it would be smart for a big game to have starters on special teams? I get that it doesn't make sense throughout the season, but I think A.J. Brown would probably be the best gunner in the NFL. If it is the most important game, they couldn't possibly be in. Why not the week before have him practice a little bit? Thanks for taking the question. Uh, I watched that. I think I did a story on that punt return the next day, and I, I watched that play like a hundred times. Um, the guy that messed up was a really good special teamer, so I thought it was TJ Edwards. Yeah. Um, he just kind of over pursued and left Tony a, there was like eight guys here and nobody here, and it just left him a lane. So, no, I mean, I, I don't want to put guys in positions that they're not used to playing and also risk injury, too. Um, I have often thought about this, though. Like, I kind of agree. Like, if AJ Brown would be the best gunner in the league, sure, if he played there, but he's not getting even a, a week of practice is not enough for him to be better gunner than Josh Job in the Super Bowl, right? And also, you know, guys only have so many plays in their legs. Yeah, and... yeah that's a good point. Like, you want AJ running down as a gunner and then playing right. sixty snaps a game, exactly. So, um. It's an interesting thought, but I just don't think you'll ever see it happen. Yeah, I do kind of get it, though. Yeah. It, it's kind of like the idea of, like, you have a really electric returner who you put back there in, in key situations. Like Westbrook. Like, later mm-hmm. in his career, you know, he didn't return punts very often, but they needed one. They would put him back. Deshaun, there. too. Deshaun, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think Deshaun was we see that good, by the way. I don't think people realize how good Deshaun Jackson was. I'm I think right. they do. Do they? Yeah. He's like a borderline we Hall of Famer to me. Okay. Anyway. Uh, last question here from Ian. Hey, gents, coming to you from Old City. Eagle Eye is my favorite podcast by far. I listen to pretty much every one. Great work, and thank you. Question for Rube. Which of the major music venues in the city is your favorite to see a show? The Met, Union Transfer, the Fillmore, etc. And are you going to the Stella Ruse album release show <laughs> at Ardmore Music Hall on December 21st? Oh, uh, they're good guys. Stella Ruse. Uh, yeah, they're uh, 
Philly, one of many, many good Philly bands. Um, my favorite venue in Philly is probably Johnny Brenda's. Okay. Um, although it's just impossible to park out there because like all the, all the places you used to be able to park are now two hours unless you have a permit. Hmm. There's like nowhere to park. Um, you can park in the, in the Fillmore lot, but then you risk like that being locked up by the time your show ends. Cause Johnny Brenda's shows go late. Um, so, you know, you can, there's, there's like some $20 lots around there you can get in, but I, I love Johnny Brenda's. That's probably my favorite venue. As far as bigger places, union transfer it can't be beat. Um, but you know, I'll tell you what, I was at the Keswick last weekend, you just, Drive out in the suburbs, park, walk over. Something nice about that, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You don't have to worry about parking and just go home. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for those questions. If you have one yourself, it's Eagle Eye at NBC. What's your favorite venue? Uni.com. Um, I don't know if I really have one. You're a Jersey guy. You ever been to that Collingswood um, theater that, that, that they opened? I haven't. No. What's it called? They actually get like decent acts there. They do. They're all like nostalgia type acts. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah, uh, but those are decent for me now. I've, I've reached the age where Scottish right. I'm into the, uh, the nostalgia acts. Scottish, right? Yeah. Incubus tonight, right, right, right over there mm-hmm. with, uh, Coheed and Cambria. Uh, I check that out. That's all we've got. If you like the Eagle Eye podcast, please rate and subscribe wherever you get your pods. If you're watching on YouTube, please click the like button, subscribe there as well. Any final words? Rube? No, I guess if there's any major activity tomorrow, we'll do a, a pod. Uh, otherwise very soon. Yep. Sounds good. Take care, everyone. This has been Eagle Eye presented by Nissan. We'll talk to you soon.